I'm Evan Inada, and I'm on a mission to visit craft food artisans in search of the perfect bite using Columbus Craft Meats Salumi. The perfect bite consists of an ideal combination of flavors and textures that unite to create irresistible taste. Charcuterie plays a special role in the equation because it brings together diverse ingredients and encourages us to explore. Join us on an adventure to discover next level charcuterie through the culinary offerings of cities across the country and around the world. See what Perfect Charcuterie Bite is all about. San Francisco is the hometown of Columbus Craft Meats. We've been committed to crafting great tasting salami and deli meats in the Bay Area for over 100 years. And while a lot about us has changed since our founding in 1917, the best things have stayed the same. The Bay Area is the best of both worlds, uniquely positioned with access to family-owned farms with rich soil and big city restaurants. Our geographic location provides access to plentiful, high-quality, fresh ingredients for chefs and makers to create culinary masterpieces. We love this city and its eclectic food enthusiasts. These passionate craft food artisans and restaurateurs inspire us to create irresistible charcuterie experiences. Thank you for having us here today. Thanks for coming out to join us in the Central Valley. And here we are just um, down the road from the cheese plant where all of the magic happens. All the magic happens here at Rustic Bakery, right? Yes, it does. And the reason why we're here, and the reason why we love working with Rustic Bakery so much is the crackers, the crunch, you guys do it better than anybody else. And the, the coolest thing is actually, you guys are the only sourdough cracker in the U.S. All right, Chef, well, thanks for having us here oh. at the Mazetta Kitchen. You know, it's always fun to be around here and like, just work with artisans like yourselves. We're, we're building these perfect charcuterie bites and really trying to grow the education around charcuterie. And I take a lot of steps from you on really trying to tell a story, bringing in some different flavors from the culture, the, the melting pot of San Francisco, yeah. really, and really trying to tell a story in every bite. And sometimes it looks crazy, but you gotta try it. And once you try it, then yeah. you understand and remember things. Sometimes more, you think more is imp more important, but what really less is more. Using quality ingredients on a pizza, five ingredients or less, is, is pretty like, kind of something that you teach in Italy. Yeah. It's all about the quality of the ingredients that go on it. So I think it's important that each ingredient that you see here can be utilized slightly different. Post-bake, par-bake, or somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that a lot of people need to understand that as they delve into cooking. And it's always about balance. You know, each bike should take you through a journey. Okay. And I always say that I want two to three different flavor profiles. And I think that's important when it comes to food in general. I mean, look what we have here. All the ingredients that we have here, this can all go on a pizza. Great, it's on a salumi board, but I can make a pretty amazing pizza, which I just did out of yep. some of the ingredients that you have here. And uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty awesome. else involved, people don't know what to do in making a charcuterie board. So what we like to do and focus around is like building perfect charcuterie bites to really make that process simple for them. The meat, the cheese, the little bit of acidity, the crunch. So what I'm going to have you do is try one of our favorite bites, which is called the unexpected. We have our bread and butter on our staple of uh, Italian dry salami. This is one of our traditional salami that we're best known for. Paired with your old world cheddar, which you're best known for, I'd say more than anywhere in the marketplace. Right. So what I want you to do is just pick up a piece of your cheese and eat it in one bite with that Italian dry. And as you chew, I want you to grab a Justin's peanut butter cup. There's a little dark chocolate in the peanut butter cup. And what that does is, as you enjoy that meat and cheese relationship, that robust flavor, popping in that dark chocolate peanut butter cup actually just elevates that umami and that robustness of the meat and cheese itself. You don't oh, really taste good. the peanut butter. Mm -hmm. When people see it, like, oh, I don't know about that, but really just enjoy that meat and cheese relationship with that extra decadence 
with that dark chocolate added to it and then finish it off with that crisp apple. Like you said, it's all about being yeah. adventurous and trying something that you wouldn't normally put together, but that's fantastic. Oh, thank you. And really that crispness when you're talking about that acid and the crunch of a sweet apple just really kind of cleanses your palate mm -hmm. and all you kind of taste is those little finishing the saltiness of the meat and cheese, but then you get that peanut butter coming back into the flavor mm -hmm. profile and really just kind of making you go, oh wow. And like you mentioned, parents can be simple. Yep. <laughs> they, they can be intimidating, but they don't need to be complex. And that was As simple excellent. as things you could find in your refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And if you like this, then you could say, well, now you know what charcuterie is. And it's, it's all it is about. So, this, so this is actually our Italian drive. Oh, so nice. Born in San Francisco, actually. So 1917 recipe, a little Parmigiano. And, and then we have the, the one of your olives, and yeah, the red peppers are fantastic too. That pairing with the little bit of heat, I love how you guys put the pepperoncinis inside the same jar as the olives because it gives it that little bit of heat that's necessary. And the extra pop of flavor too. Yeah, mm. totally. That was awesome. So traditional antipasti platter, this is it right there. Well, you know, in the Bay Area, it's we have the right atmosphere for it. That's the reason why we started making salami here, too, actually, was because the climate was very similar to Italy, so they would open up the windows and let the fog creep in, really acclimate the temperature. Yeah. So I, I love that relationship between the meat and cheese, but really for a charcuterie board, the thing that I love best is it's getting people to understand and try new flavors. We have the accoutrements, we have the sweetness, we have the crunch. We have all these all specialty items that belong on a charcuterie board together. When you're making your cheese, does all those different pairings and what you could do with the cheese afterwards, does that come into play while you're creating these? Absolutely. You know, we've got um, a variety of cheeses and three of the cheeses we make are made with raw milk and we're not adding any flavor to those. So those cheeses, when we think about pairings and um, where we want to see them later on, mm. is we want that you really to taste that, that full flavor and the age on those products, because those are the products that we've put the most care and detail in, because they've aged so long in our, in our aging rooms. And it, the flavors, the truffle or the smoked or the habanero, the purple moon, those really allow people to be adventurous. Like you mentioned, it, oh, yeah. there's no time like the present than to, to try something new. And you know, we love it when someone says, oh, I don't know, I'm not really sure about truffle. I don't really like it. And we say, oh, come on, try it. Yeah. You know, it's like I said, you always want that cheddar flavor there too. And when they try it and they are, you know, surprise themselves, yeah. it, there, there's you nothing see it in that, their yeah, eyes yeah. and they're like, oh, wow. Yeah, just, nothing makes us work. happier because yeah. um, people truly are able to to pair and there's no wrong pairing it's whatever works for you exactly. and um, and so yeah we definitely do think about that while we're, we're trying to decide what flavors and um, cheeses should be added to our line really everybody's palate has something that they are attached to or drawn towards and that's why you build the variety like you see here with this huge spread of all the different like the bolder cheese the traditional Italian we even have with your Leones, but then that wow factor is really what brings everybody together and makes people want to dig in and dive into the charcuterie board and the flavor itself. Just kind of seeing what Columbus does with their salami and seeing how amazing their salami is with some of that old world techniques that they incorporate in, it's just it's something that I, I love. You know, my, my grandpa was an Italian farmer. You know, food was a big part of my life. Watching my mom cook was a big part of my life. And using quality ingredients, you know, farm fresh ingredients were so important. Seeing that how Columbus, what they do to make their salami, especially the Felino, which is yep. my favorite. God, that's why I brought it. I was uh, yeah, like, that's yeah. your personal uh, favorite right here. It's something that's just really valuable to me uh, as a chef, as an entrepreneur, as a businessman and a family man. I mean, what lands on my table is, is a as important as anything. You know, antipasti platter, the way I look at it, has a meat element, it has yeah. a cheese element, it has a pop of acid, and it has a pop, it has a crunch. The more the better, yeah. right? Yep, <laughs> the totally. more things that you can kind of put together to, to make a really, really memorable um, bite, yeah. right? One thing that we're really we're really known for and really proud of is our roasted red bell peppers. Okay. Yep. Um, you know, that's like, with our company, quality is king. Come 
We got our little cones. Mm -hmm. I think these are perfect for any occasion, holiday, day parties, mm -hmm. whatnot. We're gonna build two, so I love these uh, olive oil crackers because it it's so long, it has that length. It really fills up the cone a lot, which is perfect. We usually go with a little bit of fruit to fill the bottom of the cones. Gives for, a little heavy weight too. Exactly. For sourdough, you wanna go grapes to kind of be that filler. I think with uh, fruit nut ones, what, what fruit do you recommend? Oh, strawberries. That's a good pick. Put a couple down there. We're gonna grab a pick. I'd say we're gonna start with a Genoa salami because Genoa is one of those milder salami, so it really brings out the flavor. Mm -hmm. But just twist it up like a rose, little rosette right there. And then we have, if you wanna pick that brie right there. Okay. Just put uh, that straight are we through. Putting a pepper on and it? then we're gonna finish a with a strawberry? nice little strawberry and then top it with a little bit of fig jam. Get that little bit of elevated sweetness. And we're just gonna make we're a gonna few plop more. It. Yeah as if the jam might fall, so we're gonna go on top yeah, next time. Yeah, exactly. For you guys, what is kind of the passion of food in your group, and what does it mean to you? Family. Yeah. And it's, whether it's family or community or friends, it's the fact of you get together and you feed people. The next bite that we're gonna build mm -hmm. in this cone is just gonna be a little simple finocchiona. Let's take, uh, we'll go Old World Cheddar. Old so cheddar. the Fiscaline Old, old World cheddar. cheddar, we got our uh, Columbus finocchiona. It's just so good because that fennel seed just comes mm -hmm. through every single bite. Fennel so. seed's one of my favorite things. Oh yeah. You can't have marinara sauce without fennel seed. Exactly, and with the olive oil, the sourdough, it's like mm -hmm. it's almost meant to be together, really. So we could put some mm -hmm. Castro Vitrano olives. Really, when you look at the salami, you can see the that sea, clean, that clear definition, the lean hand trim pork shoulder, <laughs> lean back. Yeah. <clears throat> That's just really, the quality of perfection. Yes. You want to have that look just like on a croissant, you want to have that beauty in the, the, in the face middle. of it, yeah. right in the middle. Well, and, and it's, so. especially when you cut salami down that thin and you can see through it and it's just right, mm -hmm. and you see the fat marbling just to be perfect, that's what gives it its flavor. So I love how you really mentioned like that process of the old world cheddar and really having that cloth with the mold on the outside and that's really how you build that flavor. I think the parallels between our crafts are so similar when you're talking about something like our Italian dry salami and all the salami that we make. This white stuff you see is penicillium mold and people get scared of the word mold but what they don't understand is that's how the magic is made in cheese and salami is really the mold itself. So I, I love how you say really there's, there's no real wrong way to make charcuterie There's that passion in every single roll, everything we do so that the salami comes out perfect for Columbus and for you guys at Rusty Bakery, every cracker has that perfect crunch. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate really the time that you guys take into your craft to make charcuterie boards like this or just a simple little cone just tastes as amazing as it does. It's, you know, what we do. We like to feed people. And just like no. that, we got a few little cones we can share with our team here, so. Yeah, come grab a cracker. You want one? That one? Mm -hmm. A little salami on there and the cheese. What do you think? Very good. <laughs> I think there's a lot of similarities between like your craft and our craft, really, when you're talking about ingredients and for us, like the natural casings, the wild fennel that we're using, our finocchio and everything about it, it's just, it's really that attention to detail. For us, being able to limit yourself it is an art form in itself. Yeah, no, I agree with you totally. Charcuterie and the way that we do things, what I love most about it is it, it brings people together. I think food is fuel, in my mind, more than anything else. And for you, is that the passion that kind of drives you in making and continuing on this journey that you do? Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, it, it's about family and friendships and um, the, the land and the animals. And there's just so much that goes into this and it brings people together and it's a great story to tell and to share and we love doing it. And we're gonna continue and hope we're here in another 100 years. Yeah, it's fantastic. The passionate makers I met during this trip around the Bay Area shared so many of our own values. With a keen eye on quality and keeping the process simple, preserving the craft is at the heart of all we do and it shows in the products we create. Whether it's a charcuterie board featuring artisan cheese and organic crackers cut by hand, 
or award-winning pizza and paninis. Sharing great food with loved ones while savoring every perfect bite is what it's all about. I love breaking bread here, and I'll be back to do it again very soon.